Once again, I was limping along on a broken bike. Or rather, I had been stupid and broken my bike yet again, and in the exact same way as before. So while everyone else was able to enjoy their time in the outdoors, I was focused on trying to get my bike's gear shifter fixed. I didn't think it would be too hard. After all, I did manage to find a welder just outside of Death Valley to do the same thing earlier. This was Moab. It was a mecca for off-roaders. I couldn't have been the only one to break something. There would have to be at least one fabrication shop in town. I just had to get there. Since I had broken my shifter in second gear, I was limited to slow speed, which meant I was the inconsiderate driver that people now had to pass. While slow speeds were okay on the scenic road, they could be outright dangerous on the busy US-191. I'd have to push the bike closer to its maximum second gear speed. But not knowing what it was, I could only guess based on how the bike felt. I could feel the engine vibrations through the handlebars, through my seat, through the feet pegs, the exhaust. And that's 45. Which is so much more civil. A quick search on Google had shown me one place that might be able to do what I needed. But either Google was wrong, or I was lost. Either way, this place didn't seem right. I don't think so. I don't think that's a welding place. But since I couldn't find any place else, I chose to take a risk. I'm pushing on. I kicked my bike into fifth gear. And we're going to Durango. 125 miles away, stuck in a single gear. It's like I'm going around those mountains and not through it. Because otherwise this is going to suck. I'm thinking that if I cannot get the bike fixed in Durango, then pretty much we're in emergency mode. And we simply just limp the bike back home. We find the safest way to the interstate head up to Denver, and we take I-70 all the way back home in one gear. I see some snow-capped mountains way off in the distance, but between here and there, it's just open fields. And this right here should be the Colorado state line. Ooh, a wooden sign. You don't see wooden signs that much. So I'm on US 491 right now. This used to be known as US 666. And people would talk about how people would die on here all the time because it's the mark of the beast and this is the devil's highway. But realistically, the reason this highway was numbered 666 has nothing to do with any sort of satanic worship or satanic message or anything to do with the Bible at all. Instead, it's just that's the way they had things numbered. Uh, this was the sixth portion of US 66. Nothing more, nothing less. At speed, it was easy to forget my bike was broken. But every time I came to a stop, well, all of that clutch work was there to remind me what happened. But somehow, I had made it, and once again, my bike went under the torch. This trip was about seeing America, but not everywhere can be seen from the road. There were some places I had to hike to, others I had to take a boat or a helicopter. Because of a major rock slide earlier in the year, the mountain town of Silverton had become one such place. Unless you wanted to take a 450 mile detour. The train was the only way into town. Mail and supplies went undelivered. Residents couldn't commute to their jobs or see doctors. The tourists from the town of Durango were the town's only source of income. In the news, the city of Detroit had declared bankruptcy and was being bailed out. But somehow I didn't think Silverton would get the same treatment. 
part of me wondered what math went into deciding one town should be saved and another forgotten. It definitely has a nice classic western feel to it. And I quite enjoyed my time here. I actually wanted to see about doing a uh, Old West photo, but they didn't open until 11 and I can't wait that long. No. I had distance goals to meet. Durango had been my last major stop, and now the only thing left to do was just make it back home. There'd be long, high mileage days ahead. And even though I'd still take the occasional five minute stop or so to see something on the side of the road, I honestly just wanted to get back home. As the snow melts, it creates so many of these little small waterfalls. As I climbed over the 10,000 foot mark, which by the way is the same altitude the FAA says aircraft need to start carrying supplemental oxygen, I tried to think about how much oxygen my own bike needed for each revolution of the engine. Maybe it was hypoxia, maybe it's because I didn't know the formula, but I never could come up with an answer. In an earlier plan for this trip, I had thought some about going into the plains of Wyoming for the Black Hills of the Dakotas. At one point I'd even thought about stopping in Detroit to tour the Mustang factory, something I'd thought again about after seeing all of those Mustangs in the Carolinas earlier in my trip. But all of that was back during the exciting, I can see everything, phase of the planet. Before reality steps in. And the reality was, I was tired. And yet, I could have easily taken the interstates to get there, I preferred the freedom of the two lane back roads. At least until I got to the flyover states. The long distances at high speeds. On a naked bike, without wind protection, was tiring. But even still, the bike ate up the miles. Yeah, it's still 400 miles to go before I can get off of this road. I have a long way to go. But we needed a good high mileage day, and this is it. It's just, it's a lot colder than we thought it was. And a couple of high mileage days were just a pain that I needed to get through in order to get back home sooner. I am curious, why are the flags at half-mast? What happened? 
May 9th. Why does that date not mean anything to me? What's, uh... I don't know what that means. I would later learn that Iowa's governor had ordered the flags to be flown at half-staff in observance of the state's Peace Officer Memorial Ceremony. Since I'm not from Iowa, I didn't feel as bad for not knowing that. I kept pushing onward, eventually moving into dairy country. It seemed the images of black and white spotted cows and red-sided barns weren't just from some art director's imagination. It had all come from here. I found all the dairy cows. They're in Wisconsin. Which makes sense. This is the dairy capital of America. And something else that might not have been imagination was the newfound slipping of my shifter. There'd only be one way to find out. Alright, so my shifter is acting up again. Luckily I had the tools I needed. I just have to dig through everything else to find them. Oh no. Oh, phew. For a minute I thought I lost this guy. After I take everything out, it's one thing I don't like about this toolkit. If you take everything out just so you can get to one thing. Since this was going to be a quick repair, just tightening down the shifter, it made no sense to take off the helmet. Except it wouldn't be that quick. Yeah, that. That's not good. The shifter had worn through, leaving me to dig out the pliers needed to lock myself into a single gear one more time. But if I had been able to go 160 plus miles in one gear already, I was certain I could make it a few more miles into Green Bay. Go, 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 go. I don't have the gear. Go, go, go. Thank you. And as I pulled into my friend Joe's house, I began to wonder about what my options were. Yeah, so I can buy myself a new shifter that may or may not fit. I could fly back home, grab the truck, and then come up here, pick up the bike and drive it back. Or I can just keep going in a single gear. Well, good to see he still has the same car. had gotten a new shifter. It was snug and bolted up easily. And it had only cost me $30 and one day of time. And in the traffic of Chicago, it was perfect. Not to mention at all the toll stops. Thank you. With my bike fixed, I needed to come up with other things to distract me. For instance, I began trying to figure out the, the velocity of windmills. And if one of those blades is 75 feet long, circumference of the circle is 2 times pi times radius. So that ends up being 470 feet around. Four and a half seconds per revolution. So in one minute, that blade's going around a little over 13 times. So 470 feet times 13 is roughly 6,200 feet that's traveling in one minute. Multiply that out by 60 minutes, and it's roughly 37,000 feet, or 370,000 feet. Divide that by the length of a mile, 
and at 75 feet, those blades were going 71 miles an hour at the tips. And then the rains came. Why shouldn't they? I had started the trip in rain, and it would be only fitting to end the trip in rain too. But I wouldn't stop to let the storm clouds pass by. No, I pushed on into Ohio, where the rains continued into the next morning. But I didn't care. I was now on my last day. I had a hard time sleeping last night. I just started thinking about everything that's happened on this trip so far. And how even things that were like a week or so ago, alone two weeks, about just how far away they seemed, how long it's been. And I remember the whole planning stage. And I was so looking forward to being out on this trip. Looking forward to the whole going out west. Seeing the canyons and the wide open vistas that Arizona, New Mexico, Utah had. Riding up Route 1 from California. And thinking how long that, you know, how far away that seems. And now it's already done and passed. They say adventure is misery relived at leisure. And I definitely had some miserable moments. Oh shit. Times when I was frustrated having to fix the bike. Times when I had done other stupid things. And yet, none of it seemed that bad now. And then there were the good times. The open road. The grand sights. The amazing scenery. The small side trips. And then of course there's that feeling of accomplishment. It's a beach! It's a Pacific beach! I made it to the Pacific! <laughs> it had been an adventure. Soon I saw a terrain I was familiar with. I was on roads I'd ridden before. Some of them before this trip had even begun. I had done it. I had traveled from one side of the country to the other and back again on a motorcycle, on my own. And now I was just minutes away from home. It was exciting. The end was so close. Just one more turn. And just like that, it was over. It was done. It was done. And so I went out and I found one more thing. Yeah. I went as far west as I could. Mm -hmm. I hit the ocean. Seashells? And I found something. Seashells. Close. <laughs> Will you marry me? Are you serious? Yes. I'm like, I'm like in shock right now. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs>